Originally, when I signed up for the slot, I thought there was a little bit more time. I didn't understand the 15 minutes. So I trimmed this down. So this is, I won't be rushing through it. But uh, if you have any questions afterwards or you thought it was a little different, feel free to talk to me or our studio's over on 29 Bundle across the courthouse. Stop in. We'd love to talk to you anymore. If you have any additional questions at the end of the, the session or any kind of bubble design, we're happy to talk to people and help you any way that we can. All right, we're talking about the three things you should know when designing a website. I have should there a different uh, emphasis in the rest of the words because a lot of times when I'm working with clients or we're designing websites or even myself a number of years ago, there's things that you thought you knew that you wanted and that you really didn't. And so we're going to cover just a few pain points here in this session about when you're designing for the web. Very quickly, I'm the owner of Pixel Graphic Design Studio. We started four years ago with just myself and now we have three other guys working with me. Like I said, we're over in 29 Wendell. Um, I've been designing websites for the past 10 years, really enjoy it. Um, and it's, it's fun, it's a completely different medium than print, uh, so it offers a lot of its own challenges and its own uh, success. All right, the very first thing you need to know when you're designing for the web and that you should know, and actually think about it and you do know, is that you don't control the screen size. Believe it or not, this is one of the questions I get the most, and it comes across like this, I get these quotes. I want it all to fit on one screen. Okay. This one, this one shows a little more thought. I, I don't want anyone to have to scroll to see the content. And this is my favorite quote. This shows the most thought. I hate scrolling. <laughs> okay. So how do we challenge that? In the print world, you have a piece of paper, maybe you have a poster, and it's a, very, it's a set size. When you design it, you know what the size is. Maybe you make two or three variations, but you have full control over how it's displayed, how it's viewed. You know when it's printed, it's going to be on that size paper. When it's put up on a wall, it's still going to be that size. Every time someone looks at it, it's the same size. However, come along um, different computers that have all different size screens, and also we try to make it fit all on one screen. You have it this size on one screen. The very next screen has gotten a little smaller. And also you launch one of these high-tech new computers, the 27-inch iMac. That website that used to fill a screen is now only that large. Um, People forget also Blackberry's mobile devices. How's that same screen look on there? And the orange spot obviously representing what a web or a website would be. So when people say, I don't want to scroll, I don't want it, you know, any of that to happen, that's not the best way to solve this problem. What is important is that your most important information is at the top of your website. Because that is what people see when they first get to your site. You can assume they're at least going to see some part of the top of your website. That's what you're going to grab. Um, have you ever walk in, walked into a store and you walk into the wrong department? So also if you're a guy, you walk in, there's ladies' clothes everywhere, and you're like, does this store even sell guys' clothes, right? So that's the concept of a website. You want to let people know that they're at the right site and that they're interested in your content as soon as you hit the site. But as far as this particular problem when people say, I don't want it to scroll, scrolling up and down is not an issue in the web. It's not like the print world. Allowing people to read down content is actually the way a website should operate. Trying to find a little control to navigate to go to the next three screens is going to take a lot longer than letting someone use what's built into the browser. So the solution for this, I probably need technology help here in a second. It's amazing. You have an index finger. Apple's work, just perfect. It's amazing. Um, the solution to this, the absolute best solution, this is a little technical, and I can explain it again later. But you want to set a minimum width on your website, a maximum width on your website. So if it's on a really large screen, it doesn't get too wide. You don't want people reading one line of text that runs across 20 inches of their screen real estate. Um, that's just not how people are used to reading. And then also use a mobile style sheet. If you're designing it yourself, if you're really into learning, you can do all this. It's just learn the technology and you're able to do it. If you're working with a web developer, doing all of those things is going to increase the cost of your website. So what most people do is they default to this. They use a, a fixed width that should work on most size screens, and they normally skip the mobile style sheet. I think this year that's fine. In about two years, not doing that is going to really be a problem. So really start thinking about the mobile device and how people have been waiting to use the internet's changing. All right, so that's one problem. I did it a lot, so I thought I'd bring it up. I don't know if it's a problem for everybody, but people always ask me to do that. I always have to explain why that may not be the best thing. The second thing is, this is kind of odd, but this one's really important. And, and there's another part I'm going to touch on this, not in the slideshow. But your corporate colors might turn yellow. And what I mean by this is every screen displays colors a little differently unless it's calibrated. It's really easy in a design firm to have all your screens calibrated. Again, in the print world, you calibrate to the printer you're printing on, you make sure the color's all right, you can control the whole way through. In the web world, I can't even guarantee that my client is seeing the same colors as on my 
history. So, what's really important here, and these are some quotes, again, I always put, I put the quotes in here to get, I like the color purple you use in your comp better. I didn't use purple in the comp. What are they looking at? <laughs> you find some dark blue that turned up purple on your screen. This one we got just about two weeks ago on poster design. I really like the brown background. There's a dark gray background. I'm like, how is that showing up brown? But this just illustrates the fact that even from client to, to our studio, there's a color difference. And so this is a principle, and I'm going like, to almost rehash this identically for another thing that we often face. Colors are never guaranteed. You know, this is the actual color of our website, but if it's on a slightly yellow monitor or a slightly blue monitor, it's going to look different. All right? So keep that in, in mind. And why this is important, it's, not, it's nothing you can do to fix it. What's important is that you don't waste money and time troubleshooting color over and over and over. What is important is if someone shows you a design and you come up with one that has all different colors on the same screen, that's a problem. You want to make sure that they match within themselves. So the solution here is try your best, then stop worrying. All right? You're never going to get this thing perfect. I think this, as we'll take it aside here just for a second, this is the biggest problem with web design. So many variables that you can't control. And in the print world, again, we're used to being perfectionists. The printer printed is too red. You take it back and you reprint it. Um, the font didn't turn out quite right, or this didn't load quite right. In the web world, there's so many variables that depend on the user's system and depend on even the browser that they're using. And, and so it's important that you set your expectations appropriately. You want it to be pleasing, you want it to work well, and you want it to look well across a number of browsers and platforms. But it's not going to be that perfect attention that you want. It will in your favorite browser because you probably spend most time on that one. But it's not going to be perfect across everything. Just get used to that. I'm going to go back just for a second again. It's not on the slides. But the other concept is um, fonts. This is getting a lot better. There's been a lot of um, progress made in the web field in the last, even this past year on allowing more and more control over how the fonts show up on your website. Um, at, up to last year, pretty much our only choice was you pick fonts you hope they have on your system, and if they don't, then you pick the next best and the next best. Um, but even line spacing, line height, you can control those things with web design, and a good designer knows how to do that. But there's still going to be variants. Um, I just saw Fox Sports. If you go home on Fox Sports, if you have more than one browser, this will be where this pays off. Open it up in Internet Explorer, and then open it up in Firefox or Safari or Google Chrome or something else. You'll see that they program their site in a very specific way, that if any of these certain lines are at right in the middle column, this ad overlaps something else, the whole page just starts getting all jumbled. They weren't taking consideration as what their designer's computer looked like, isn't what everyone else looked like. Um, that's an actual error on their part, but in your own websites, don't expect that that word will always be on the end of that line. That title may wrap in someone else's browser. So keep that in mind, and don't be a perfectionist when it comes to website. Try your best, then stop worrying. All right, this one isn't specifically about design, but this is very important when you approach your website. Choosing a technology is not the first step. Uh, oftentimes, people will approach our studio or when we approach a project, they say, I want to use, in this case, Flash. I want to use Flash, and I want to do this. So they're making two assumptions. One is that they know that Flash is the best technology to do what they want, and then they know what they want. It's always better just to find out what your problem is you're trying to solve, and then start there and find a technology piece that, that meets that. I love technology. I have an iPhone. I, I have my own Mac at home. I love new gadgets. Anything that comes out excites me. But if, if I try to solve a problem first with the technology I use and then find the business problem, um, it, would, it will produce a problem. So I have a couple of things here as well. This, this again, this is how a conversation normally starts. I want to use Drupal, WordPress, a technology, some sort of technology solution. And then after they get through that, then they say, now, do you think I need a shopping cart? Well, do you need a shopping cart? If you do, we probably not want to go with that solution, or we might want to have to find something else. And then this is the other one. I'll just touch on this briefly. I want to use Flash. For those of you who don't know, anything that moves on a web page isn't necessarily Flash. So if you want movement on your web page, just say, I'd like this to move, or I'd like a slideshow, or I'd like that. You don't necessarily need to say, I need a Flash slideshow. Um, there's a number of reasons behind my saying that, but again, it shows that a technology has been chosen for the business problem. See if I can come up with this one clear illustration of this. This, this is often, and, and here's where you're going to run into this. Studios can only know so many technologies. 
So they're going to want you to use the ones that they know so that you can hire them, right? That's just kind of common sense. They can't know everything, and so they're going to know certain things very well. So what you really want is to be able to find out what is the exact thing that you need. So if you want to shop the card on your website, if your website's supposed to um, draw people in, if it's supposed to show an art gallery, whatever the need is, clearly know what that is. Cool sites that you like, those are important because they help someone understand what you're doing. If you're designing yourself, again, that's fun and it's good to know as background, but know your core problem and then go out and look either for a vendor or for the stuff yourself to do. And there's tons of things. I, I showed you a couple of them. That one's paid if you have to use WordPress and Drupal, both free. So it's not necessarily cost. I'm not talking about cost savings as much as time savings and frustration of using technology that's not fit for your product. All right, so the solution is always detail the business needs and problems first, then look for technology to solve that problem. That will you can do that actually in the rest of your life as well. That really saves a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just quickly, um, if you, I, I have cards with me. They're my business manager's cards. I'm out, which is horrible. And I've had to say this in front of Kevin, who's another designer. Just, <laughs> you don't run out of your own business cards. But uh, I am on Twitter. On, uh, that's my email address. I'm on Skype. You can look us up a number of ways, but please, we'd love people to stop in our studio and just say hey. Um, so we have about three minutes left, two minutes left. Uh, you talked about screen size. Yes. So if you're an entity that uh, knows people are going to want to find you, both, both on the internet, if they're doing like advanced research before they come and visit you, let's okay. say. But they're also going to access your website on a mobile device. Why wouldn't you have on your website some place where they can click that says, if you're on a mobile device, click here so you can actually read the most important information, like when you're open or where you are or what you're showing. Or is there a way to to quickly give people an option so you, that you can an ease of use? You can. What what the best tech, the best solution that seems to be out there right now? Actually, you can detect that they're on a mobile site before your page even loads and show them the mobile site and give them an option to go to your real site. You're assuming they want the faster version of your site because they're on a mobile device, and then you show a button that says, go to full site. What that says is, here's the most important information. It loads in a couple seconds on their phone. And if they say, no, no, I'm on an iPhone, or I'm on a new Android phone, and I want to see your full site, then they have an option to go there next. So that can be actually handled completely um, by the technology. The server can do that. There's a difference between making a whole mobile version of your site and making it mobile friendly. Okay. Yeah, mobile friendly, same site, same content. Uh, if you want a full mobile version, then it's a separate site. Yes. All right, one more question. 